On the FLW's last visit to Lake Champlain, the results were totally awesome, and one ounce decided the win. The fish are biting again. And it figures to be another shootout. How do you spell drama? Around Lake Champlain, it starts with FLW, outdoors. Yes, sir, that's what we're looking for, my friend. Ball game, baby. <laughs> yeah. He could have one more in here. He does. We have a champion. Yeah. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Hallelujah! Hello everyone and welcome to FLW Outdoors. I'm Carlton Wing along with Taylor Carr and today we're joining you from Plattsburgh, New York. It's the site of the Forestwood Open. It's also the final regular season event for the 2004 season. There is a lot on the line. There's also some adverse weather so today we're joining you inside. This is the site of our pre-tournament anglers meeting. The Angler of the Year race will be decided here. Shinichi Fukai right now, rookie from Japan, is your leader. He leads Greg Hackney by 33 points. But recall two years ago, on this very lake, Kevin Van Dam had a big lead over Jay Yellis. Yellis came back and won Angler of the Year. It could happen. Hackney has to fish well. Shin has to struggle. But we could see a shakeup in Angler of the Year. And we might get an idea of who will fish well and who may struggle and how they will do so. Hank Parker joins us right now. Hank? Hey, thanks, Carlson. Today we've got a great show. We've got a real horse race for the Angler of the Year. We've got FLW Pro Shin Fukai, who was the Angler of the Year in Japan last year. He's come to America, first year on the FLW tournament circuit. He's leading Greg Hackney by 33 points. And I'm going to tell you, Greg Hackney wants to win that title just as bad as Shin. So it's going to be a real battle between those two guys right here on Lake Champlain. And then we got Vic Vallero, who is a guy that's on the bubble. And you know, so many of the guys base their whole year on whether or not they qualify for the Tour Championship. Only 48 guys are going to do it. Vic is one of those guys, one spot out. He's our bubble boy. So we're going to be fishing with all these guys today. We're going to be taking a look at what they're going to do to catch fish on Lake Champlain. Back to you, Taylor and Carlson. Thanks, Hank. You know, those three pros and all 200 competitors have a whole lot to fish for this week. Now, and that's because the FLW Tour Championship is just around the corner. It's in August, a million and a half dollars on the line, 500000 to the winner. And at this tournament, we will shore up our field of 48 finalists. Let's take a look at that truly unique championship format. The most exciting event in professional fishing is back and better than ever. The $1.5 million 2004 FLW Tour Championship will feature the best anglers of the year angling for the payday of a lifetime, $500,000. It's a life-changing event in a thrilling head-to-head -head format that's a first in this sport. It's angler against angler for the best prize in the sport. The top seed will face the 48th seed in the first round, and the second seed will meet number 47 and so on through the bracket. Winners in the first round will advance to the semifinals for more head-to-head -head action. Then on the final day, the final 12 anglers will all fish for the big money, half a million dollars. Now if the championship were held today, top seed Shinichi Fukai would face 48 seed Kevin Vida. Other fun matchups would include Castrol Pro and defending 2003 champion David Dudley against Ozark Trail Pro Andy Morgan. Or Kellogg's Pro Dave Lefebvre against Fuji Pro Randy Blockett. Take a look at the list of anglers just outside of the top 48. Dion Hibden at 51, Larry Nixon is at 52, Mike Worm is at 54, and Scott Martin is at 55. It all comes down to Lake Champlain, the Forest Wood Open, the final event of the season, the last chance to get into the biggest event in pro fishing, the 2004 FLW Tour Championship. As you can tell, it's a big event for the anglers and also a big event for the fans. Mark the dates on your calendar. The FLW Tour Championship, August 11th through the 14th in Birmingham, Alabama. You'll see history when one angler walks away with the title and a half a million dollar payday. Now to get to that field of 48, some anglers must fish well in this event on Lake Champlain. Coming up, what makes Champlain unique? And one thing is largemouth and smallmouth will be a big factor in this event. Well, one of the anglers who always fishes well at Champlain and just about everywhere else in the country is Aaron Martins. Coming up on FLW Outdoors, we'll take you across country to California to meet the Martins family. Here's this week's field and stream trivia. 
Which body of water hosting a 2004 Walmart FLW Tour tournament is also fabled to host a monster? Is it Lake Okeechobee, Old Hickory Lake, Beaver Lake, or Lake Champlain? The answer coming up on FLW Outdoors. The Field and Stream trivia answer is D, Lake Champlain. The Iroquois nation which lived along the lake before the Europeans had stories of a horned serpent called Ojahozo. The legendary monster is now referred to as Champ. Welcome back to FLW Outdoors. We're on the New York side of Lake Champlain, considered one of the best bass fisheries in the world. Now what makes Champlain special? Well, there are two reasons. There's good fish. It's because anglers catch so many fish here and because those big stringers contain quality largemouth bass and Champlain specialty, the aggressive smallmouth. Here's the layout of the sixth largest freshwater lake in the U.S. Most of Champlain is between Vermont and the Green Mountains to the east and New York and the Adirondacks to the west. Champlain flows south to north into Canada and covers about 500 square miles of outstanding fishing ground. Plattsburgh, New York is home base for the tournament, and the 200 FLW pros have access to lots of water. They can run about 30 miles north to the Canadian border and then run 70 miles or more south. There's a good one. During the tour's first stop here in 2002, the results were record setting. All 178 pros caught fish, and all but eight had limits. And everywhere I pulled up, I'd throw in there, and the next thing you go, fish on. I, all day long, I got whooped. Well, I tell you, it's about my fourth tournament up here, and it never ceases to amaze me how we can just absolutely come up here and have a blast and catch fish after fish after fish. It's just unbelievable fishing. And typical of Champlain, the pros caught lots of fish lots of different ways. That trend continued in the finals, where we saw Mark Harden flipping a jig and catching largemouth, Jim Moyna working a jerkbait and getting good response from smallmouth and several pros sight fishing. And I'm about a foot away, six inches away. There she is. Roll some tape. It's going to happen. You got him. Yeah. Not as big as I thought. Eventual winner Sam Newby caught his early fish on a jerk bait, and then with a the limit secure, started flipping for bedding fish. And it was those largemouth caught off beds that put him over the top. Now note that Newby was very precise when it came to culling. As it turned out, a one ounce mistake would have cost him over $100,000. This year, the fishing looks to be just as good, maybe leading to another nail biter finish. So it's almost a guarantee this event is gonna be close. To find out how close, pro Lee Bailey from Amston, Connecticut. Now you fish Champlain a lot. Lee, what's likely to be the big key in this tournament? The big key in this tournament is gonna to be the wind. They're predicting some wind coming in. It's already here, and if it don't get out of here quick, we're going to have a tough time. How bad can it get on Champlain when the wind really blows? Oh, this lake can blow up eight, nine, ten oh. foot without a problem. You have a couple of key patterns for us today. Yeah, I do. These these fish are in in a pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn stage. We got fish doing everything, and what we're going to start out doing is looking for some of them post-spawn fish. One of the main patterns that are going to go on here this week is fishing isolated shade structures like moored sailboats and moored boats that are just a little bit off the bank. The bass like to get up underneath those for a couple reasons. One is the shade, but the other is as those boats spin around with the wind changing, it also clears out some grass and it kind of creates a hole in the grass. And then bass like to get in that, especially during the post-spawn. We had run across the lake and looking for some calm water and found this pencil grass in that calm water. I know that's something that a lot of the fishermen are going to do this week, especially if that wind blows. They may not be fishing exactly where they want to be fishing, but they're going to come into this calm water, and if they find the pencil grass, they're going to find a bunch of bass in it. As you can see with this fish, it, it almost swallowed the jig. These fish in the shallow water, even though it's only a couple feet deep, still suspend, and that real slow fall jig allows them to just inhale it. And that's what this fish did, it just inhaled it, got it in real deep. If I was throwing a heavier jig, I might not have caught that fish. When you come up to Lake Champlain, you'd be crazy not to have a spinnerbait with you. Them smallmouth and largemouth both like to suspend in that deeper grass. And especially if the wind blows like it's blowing today, them fish will get out there and really crush a spinnerbait. But bring a lot of spinnerbaits with you because them northern pike up here are going to eat them up just as quick. 
Lee, we've seen firsthand about this weather because when we started, we were in short sleeves and it was warm and now it's cooled off and we had some rain. I mean, weather is going to be a factor in this tournament. It sure is. It's going to change a lot of things. I mean, guys are going to even have to fish where they don't want to fish just because they can't get to their fish. Uh, you gave us good insight. Lee Bailey, thank you very much. Thank you. Pro Lee Bailey. More on the weather now on our Banana Boat Outdoor Conditions. Sunshine and very calm conditions on day one with highs in the 70s, then turning windy on day two, some typical Lake Champlain weather. Friday's temperatures range from 50s to 70s, and the same for Saturday, UV index 5 to 6. So fittingly, we'll see a wide variety of conditions here on Lake Champlain. To Hank Parker now, who's standing by with one of our pros who's got lots to fish for in this event. Hey, thanks, Taylor. We're with Vic Vadalero, and you we're got it. right here, the bubble guy, 49th place. 48 guys go to the Tour Championship, and to fish for a half a million dollars. You're one spot out, you're on a lake that has lots of different personalities and a lot of adversity to deal with. Tell me about it. <laughs> what I'm gonna do, I am gonna listen to the guy beside me and not be nervous, not worry about what place I'm in, go out and do the best I can. I'm gonna go try to find five three-pounders. Fish the fish. Fish the fish. Beat yeah. the fish and you're in the championship. If you don't, you're going home. I hope I'm going to the championship. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right, let's go out on Lake Champlain, brutal Lake Champlain today. I mean, a lot of wind and we're gonna see what Vic can do with these big small mouth and large mouth. Yep, we're gonna look for both today. All right, let's go. See what we can do. I'm ready if you are. Battalero. Battalero. You got Battalero. it. Battalero. 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 You got it. Talk with your hands. Mario Andretti. <laughs> Battalero. You know, this is such an incredible lake. It's got so many patterns. There's a fish. A rye. The wrong. The it's wrong a toothy brand. critter. What do they call those? The wrong brand of fish. <laughs> got a fish. Hey, it might be a smallmouth. It is a smallmouth. Can you believe it? You caught me a trophy now this guy would have to grow about hey that's a small six mouth years bass. what do you think no i think another year and he'll be a keeper he'll be a keeper <laughs> not the keepers that we want i think this wind would push him up on the bar i didn't think it was supposed to be as breezy as it is today you call this breezy Breezy. <laughs> this is breezy. This ain't brutal. <laughs> this is breezy. So what do you do? How do you deal with all the variables that's involved with Lake Champlain? Well, I'll tell you, I'm, uh, I've been coming up here for a while and most of my tournaments have been in the fall. So most of my patterns are post-spawn patterns that I know out on these rocky edges and and long drawn out points where they drop into deep water. So I've kind of left the spawners to everybody else, it seems like. I know there's a lot of fish spawning, largemouth and smallmouth, but I'm trying to key on long drawn out points with deep water real close by. Like hopefully the fish that have already spawned and moved out on the end and are feeding, that's what I'm looking for. What do you do about the weather? Do you find fish? that you can fish on all different winds, whether it's out of the north, south, east, or west, or do you set strategies like that, or what do you, how do you deal with that? What I've been trying to do, because th this wind can definitely kill you. I mean, it could be rolling five footers on your best spot. Uh, I've been trying to get a northern spot, a southern spot, an eastern, you know, that are protected from all the different winds. I've been trying to get areas that I can fish regardless of the wind. And I've even got areas that are tucked into bays or channels, you know, like that are definitely protected from any wind, you know, that I can go catch two pounders, you know, but the position that I'm in being in 49th place, two pounders, I don't think are going to do it, you know, so do I got to try to, I don't think. What I mean, do I don't know whether to play safety and I, I should almost ask you, do you play the two pounder game quick or do you just go for threes or, you know, basically go for broke? Hey, you got yourself a rock mm. bass. <laughs> Those are exciting, aren't they? Those are exciting fish. Are these good eating? No. Oh, they're not. 
They just no, like to right. eat your beef. See that big old ah. mouth on that thing? Yeah, that was awful. Mm. Ah, you taste, man. you kissed that thing? Yeah. I didn't even notice that. I ate about it. Oh my gosh. All right, Vic, I'm wishing you the very best. I wish you, Thank you very a much. big string of three pounders, move up to 45th place, have a little cushion in there. That's right. I do not want to be 48. <laughs> well, we're going to move from 49th all the way up to the top of the leaderboards. Two guys are in the top running for Angler of the Year. We're going to be joining those guys right after this on FLW Outdoors. FLW Outdoors is brought to you by Walmart. Always low prices, always. By Oh Boy Oberto Beef Jerky. Taste what's real, it better be Oberto. By Banana Boat. Celebrate the sun. And by BF Goodrich. Take control. Lowry's Wolf Pack. Get him up here, Todd. Get him up here fast, he says. Here comes Todd Otten. Todd is the last man who can take the title away from Sam Newby. He needs a five pound, four ounce fish. And Sam says that was not going to be big enough. This one here weighs in at two pounds, 11 ounces. We have a champion, Sam Newby. Sam Newby, your 2002 Forestwood Open champion. Sam, it's been an incredible year and what a thrilling finish for the regular season. I don't know what to say right now. I I've been shooting at this all year, and it finally happened. Here's an update from the Everstart Series. In the first event from the Northern Division, Jeff Ritter of Wisconsin beat out Kellogg's pro Dave Lefebvre with a total catch of 23 pounds and one ounce. Jeff wins $50,000 in cash and prizes. For more information on the entire family of FLW Outdoors events, log on to flwoutdoors.com. And welcome back to FLW Outdoors, everyone. It's raining outside in Plattsburgh, New York. So we're in the Civic Center previewing the million and a quarter dollar Forest Wood Open on Lake Champlain. Well, all season long, BF Goodrich Pro Scott Martin has taught us the finer points of fishing in our Fishing 101 segments. This week's topic is one of the most exciting ways to catch fish on a topwater lure. Hi, I'm Scott Martin. Today we're going to talk about a topwater lure. You know, a topwater is one of my most favorite ways to catch fish, especially on a cloudy day. In the springtime, the summertime, or even the fall, it's a great lure to fish when the bass are up shallow feeding on bait. There he is. He came up behind it two or three times. He inhaled that popping bait. You know, popping bait's a great lure to use on a cloudy day like today where these fish are feeding on shad, very small little shad. It's slow enough to draw the attention of the fish, but the important thing about a popping bait is this little feather that they put on the back. This little feather dangles down in the water as you're popping this along, and it actually looks just like the little minnows are feeding on. So a lot of times these fish really aren't even paying much attention to the bait itself. The bait's making the splash, but this little feather's dangling in the water and it allows those fish to, to key in on that little piece of feather there. They think it's a minnow and they attack it. The retrieve of a popping bait like I'm throwing today is real important. A lot of times I'll start off by fishing it slow. I'll make a long cast, let the bait hit the water, and let all the rings dissipate from around the bait. It might take four or five seconds. And then I'll engage my reel and make a pop and let it sit there again. And I'll keep a steady one pop for a little while. And if I don't get any bites doing that, I'll change it up a little bit. I might mix it up and do a one pop and then I'll do two pops. One pop, two pops. And just kind of play with it a little bit and see what the fish like because a lot of times fish are real particular on the speed that that bait's moving. And even sometimes if they're, if they're real active, I'll go real fast the whole time. Just kind of short little twitches and then stop it. Pop it once. And a lot of times those fish will hit it right then after that. So just play with your retrieve a lot. A lot of times that's the biggest key to fishing on top water is the speed of your bait. All right. Nice little popper fish. I tell you, these little top water like this on a cloudy day, especially when the fish are feeding on small bait, little, little popping bait like that on about 10, 12 pound test line, 
You'll catch a lot of fish. That's a lot of fun. One of the great storylines of this 2004 season is the rise to power of Shinichi Fukai. Japan's best angler is about to be America's best angler. Yeah, he won the title in Japan last year and could win it here this year. He could win back-to-back -back Angler of the Year titles. What a story. Shin Fukai is now with our Hank Parker. Hey, thanks guys. Hey, we have got a fascinating story coming up. We've got Shin Fukai from Japan. Last year he was the 2003 Angler of the Year in Japan. He's come to America. He's mostly staying in a camper, going around all the lakes that he's never been to before, and he's our current Lando Lake Angler of the Year leader. We're gonna have Gary Yamamoto interpret for us, because I, I am horrible at English, let alone trying to speak Japanese. So Gary's gonna join us, he's gonna interpret. But first, before we go to them, I wanna say, I am so impressed. We talk about the mental toughness of this sport. Shin has fished in tournaments in Japan where they have 300 anglers on a little small body of water. And I think the mental toughness that you have to develop to compete in that environment is, is playing a big role in why he's successful here. And I think it's just a prime example of how mental toughness and how mentality plays into the game of fishing. So now we're going to join Shin Fukai and Gary Yamamoto. Thank you, Hank, for the introduction. Shin. When you come to a new lake, how do you prepare for it? まずこうマップを広げてでまああの湖の印象をつかむためにこうぐるっと一周回るような感じですね。How does the uh, tournament in Japan compare to the FLW tournament? うんまあやっぱりこっちの方が湖が大きいんですごい自由に釣りができてやっぱり楽しいです。what was your goal coming to the United States this year? うーん、まあそんなにね結果は考えてなかったです。あの初めて出る試合ですし、トーナメントですし、そのまあいろんな勉強するためだったんで、そんなにこう結果は望んでなかったです。うん、いやもうここまでねこんなに状態であと一回。ここの試合残せる残してここまでこういう形でなれるなれるとはもう全く思ってなかったです。Do you think you're going to be the 2004 Ang uh, Land of Lakes Angler of the Year? <笑> もう全然そんなこと考えつかないです。もうそうなったとしても多分本当とは思わないでしょうね。If you were to win Land of Lakes Angler of the Year, what would it mean to you? どうなるんですか教えてください僕にはもう全然想像つかないです<笑> Osaka Japan Shinichi Fukai Just a little, little, little speak English. Number one. No big fish. Shinichi Fukai, Japanese for very, very perfect. Well, not really, but with three top tens in the first five events of the season, he's fished about as perfectly as anyone could expect. And consider this, Shin had never fished any of the FLW waterways before he competed on them this year. Fukai! He does not speak English, but he certainly understands how to fill out a check. <laughs> lots of zeros. Shin saying lots of zeros. He also understands how to fill a live well. And a weigh-in scale. It's a storybook season worth rereading. Okeechobee is chapter one of the breakout year. A then unknown Fukai approached the stage for his first ever weigh-in and announced his presence on the tour with a whopping sack of 22 pounds 11 ounces. Fifth best of the day. Fukai would go on to finish fourth. Not a bad debut. Fukai! At the Achafalaya Basin, Fukai surged on day two with the 12th best stringer of the day and finished just out of the top 10 in 11th place. Fukai entered his third tournament second in the season standings. 
That's when Fukai stumbled for the first and only time this season. Shin finished in 71st place. He still cashed a check, but it was his worst finish of the year. Now, anyone who thought Fukai's free fall from 4th to 11th to 71st meant he was a flash in the pan was dead wrong. Fukai! At the Walmart Open, Fukai was back in the top 10, thriving on the clear waters of Beaver Lake. He led after day one, a full pound better than second place. Shin held his own, finishing sixth and jumping back into second place in the Land O'Lakes Angler of the Year race. Kentucky Lake, the latest chapter in Fukai's rise to power. A 30th place finish on day one did not dissuade the man determined to take the season points lead. Shin caught the second largest stringer of day two to secure a slot in his third top 10 of the season. He'd go on to finish fifth. Now with one event to go, Fukai holds a commanding lead in the season points race, 33 points ahead of Yamaha Pro Greg Hackney. Only three others are within 100 points of Fukai. It's Shin's race to win or lose. <laughs> I sure wouldn't bet against him, I can tell you that. Hey, coming up next, we're going to take a look back at Lake Champlain 2002. Welcome back to Plattsburgh, New York. We're at Lake Champlain, one of the great fisheries in this country. And let's talk about the last time the FLW Tour visited Champlain. It was 2002. And you know, Champlain is one of those lakes where every angler comes off the water feeling great. In fact, at the end of day one, Stephen Anderson, a young pro out of Kentucky, walked up to the stage with a five fish limit and felt great until he saw he was in 171st place. There's that many fish to be caught here. And it's almost guaranteed to be close. We've seen how Sam Newby targeted big largemouth on the last day, and it made for one of the great finishes in FLW history. What more could the FLW and its world-class anglers ask for? Beautiful day one weather on a beautiful lake and an unheard of abundance of fish. And talk about fish. Wednesday's weigh-in revealed that of 178 pro anglers, all but eight bagged the five fish limit. It was the biggest single day weight in FLW history. Isn't this a great place to fish? It's the best place in the, that I've ever fished, for sure. It's incredible. Michigan's Chad Grigsby brought in the day's top stringer, 19 pounds, 14 ounces, and he did it targeting largemouth. On the theory, smallmouth alone couldn't win the tournament. The Land O'Lakes Angler of the Year race got interesting when points leader Kevin Van Dam finished the day in 30th place. Yamaha Pro Jay Yellis would have a shot at the title, but he'd have to make the cut and hope Van Dam didn't. Van Dam only managed 44th place, leaving the door wide open for Yellis if Jay could make the cut. Jay Yellis has got five in the bag, 17 pounds, eight ounces, 33.15. He is in the top 20. I've gone from having absolutely no pressure on me all week because it was up to, you know, up to Kevin and he happened to stumble this week. So now I've gone from having no pressure to having all the pressure on me. Jay needed at least a 16th place finish to overtake Van Dam and win Angler of the Year. Jay rose to the occasion, finishing 10th. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, your 2002 Land O'Lakes Angler of the Year, Jay Yellis. Put yourself in Todd Otten's shoes. One day, you're entering your first ever FLW event. Three days later, you're fishing in the finals against Rick Klun, Dean Rojas, and David Dudley with a $210,000 paycheck on the line. Talented, exciting, intimidating. Words that described the final field for the 2002 Forest Wood Open. One thing the anglers knew heading into Saturday's competition, catching fish wasn't the problem. Catching quality fish would determine the champion. If I had to keep that one, I ain't gonna win. Two top guns on the 2002 Tour battled down to the final ounce for this year's title. Yamaha Pro Dean Rojas and FLW newcomer Sam Newby. $210,000 to the winner and $105,000 for second place. Seven pounds, eight ounces by one ounce, a new leader. And that spells disaster for Dean Rojas. Sam Newby, your 2002 Forest Wood Open champion. Sam Newby won the Forest Wood Open $210,000 by one ounce over Dean Rojas. Now, Dean had that long drive back to Arizona, but he said he kept himself awake by looking in the passenger seat. That's where he had placed his $105,000 second place check. Coming up on FLW Outdoors, we go out to California with Ranger Pro Aaron Martins and meet Red Hot Yamaha Pro Greg Hackney. FLW Outdoors is brought to you by Castrol GTX. 
maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. Buy Energizer batteries and flashlights, the power to keep you going and going. Buy EverStart batteries, more power for your money. And buy Evinrude Outboards. Hi, I'm Fuji Pro Wesley Strader from Spring City, Tennessee, and today I'm going to be discussing how to make your outboard perform just a little bit better. Oh, yeah! Sometimes on your uh, outboard, when you trim your motor down, you're going to hear a, a popping noise. And what that popping noise is, is uh, these pistons meet this housing, and if there's no grease on it, it'll, it causes too much friction and it makes a popping noise and, I, and the way to solve that is, is all you do is you take a grease gun you put just a little dab on your finger it doesn't take very much rub it on each one of these pistons you need to do this you know ever you know two or three months or maybe even a little bit more depending on how much you use your outboard and uh, this should make your outboard go up and down a whole lot smoother Consider that in three years on the FLW Tour, Aaron Martins has qualified for five top tens, been to three FLW Tour championships, and scored a $200,000 win at last year's Forestwood Open. Martins is clearly at home on the water and among the world's best anglers. But ask Aaron and his wife Leslie where home really is, and you've posed a tough question. Is it Castaic, California, Birmingham, Alabama, or the road? It depends on where we are, I guess. I find, catch myself saying home when I'm talking about the hotel sometimes. Mm -hmm. I have to go home now. I, I mean, back to the hotel. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, really, that's a really hard question. I get, I get asked that quite a bit, actually. When we're in Birmingham, that's home. When we're here, it's home. Here is California. And if you had to pin them down to one place they had to call home, Castaic would be it. This is Aaron's pond. This is his passion when he gets home. <laughs> That and my fish tank. And yeah, and his fish tank. And uh, he works on this all the time, always putting new vegetation in it. Like many anglers who can't get enough of the outdoors, Aaron's hobby has a direct connection to his chosen profession. I just, I just love anything that does water. So, I mean, it's just really a, a, neat, a neat thing. I've, it's always been my dream to have a, a pond and an aquarium, a big aquarium. You know, I've always wanted that since I was a little, probably since I can remember when I was a little kid. And uh, I finally did it, and that took me, took me 30 years, but I got it. The pond is nice, but Aaron prefers the real thing, his home lake and a big bass mecca, Lake Castaic. It's just got a lot of rock. Um, actually, when I first started fishing, it's like it had a lot of dirt in it, and the dirt's kind of, from the years, it's, like, it's a young lake, it's from 72, I think they built it. Castaic is where he started fishing. It's where he learned to tie the drop shot he's famous for, and it's where he's caught unbelievable numbers of huge fish. I hate it at its best growing up. I caught over 110 pounders out of here and I used to catch them all the time and I mean I was just you know 20 years old coming up here every day after work throwing big baits. It was just an awesome lake. You'd look you know as far as you could see you'd see fish busting you know. It, it still gets good but not not like that. Look at the biggest bass of all time and four Castaic bass make the top seven including number two on the list Bob Krupe's monster from 1991 that weighed just over 22 pounds. You'd have a night tournament here and it'd be like You'd have an 11 pounder and they wouldn't, they wouldn't look at it. It's just, you know, put in the bag. You know? It's just like, they caught like 30 or 40 like that. I mean, literally, you catch like, everybody would have a 10 pounder. And uh, it'd take like 40, 50 pounds of wind sometimes for a night tournament. Aaron put his big bass training on Castaic to good use. Encouraged to compete by his mother, Carol, he began to win. They often fish team events together, each tournament helping convince Aaron that his knack for fishing could someday become a career. In only his second year on the FLW Tour, the Lake Wheeler event came down to Martins and Hall of Famer Larry Nixon. Nixon won, but Martins learned. In 2003, Martins set his sights on Lake Wheeler again, this time in the Forest Wood Open with a $200,000 first prize. In practice, Aaron found fish. I got on a fish right away for once, you know, and had to wait a whole week before the tournament started, which is kind of nerve-wracking, watching guys fish the spot. And, I mean, everything went perfect. Everything went, uh, this is planned. I mean, as, 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 I, as, as best thing I could hope for, it, it went 
like I was hoping it would. It came down to Martin's and local favorite Tim Horton. The excitement was just incredible, and the way the FLW does the lands, it just is like, I could hear my heartbeat, you know, and I was sitting in that seat back to that boat. You know, and being so close to Timmy, you know, that guy's either, it's either going to be me and, or him. And uh, Timmy kept on looking at me because I was sitting right in front of Timmy. He kept on saying, he kept on like, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, don't I, do that to me. <laughs> Two months later, Jordan arrived, the first for Aaron and Leslie. And then just before the 2004 season, they settled into a new RV. Now ask the Martins where home is, and they'll say anywhere the fish are biting. I'm here with Greg Hackney on the last stop of the FLW Championship run. You just came back from another tournament, so you've only had like a half a day of practice. So far. This is going to be tough. It what is. are you going to do? Uh, well, I'm just going to keep my head down and do like normal. Keep your head down and do like normal. If he does like normal, he's going to do well because you're about the hottest guy going on both circuits. So you got it all figured out and you're going to show us what to do. Well, I mean, uh, I'm all, right now I'm still experimenting. I hadn't decided whether I'm going to fish a small mouth or large mouth. Okay. Uh, I will tell you I'm kind of leaning right now towards the large mouth just because it suits my style. And with not much practice, I'm a little more comfortable with doing that. Makes sense. But it, it, the thing about it is when you come to this part of the country, you got to catch some small mouth, you know, because it's so enjoyable. Oh, you're going to do it for fun, huh? Yeah, I'm going to do it for fun because I with still like to just... With all this pressure, you telling me you're going to just be able to relax and have a little fun, catch a few smallmouth and enjoy it? Yeah, you have to. You'd hate to waste a trip all the way to New York and not catch a smallmouth. We're going to rename you to Mr. Cool. Ice water running through those veins. What the heck? Go for it. I like it. Let the games begin. Well, this is the way I like to look at it. This isn't no different from me just going out there and going fishing. So that's the way I try to keep it, and that way I can stay that way. If you get caught up in it, the other, I'm thinking, man, I can go out just about any day, no tournament on the line, catch what I want to catch, you know, and really have a good time doing it. Look at that, look at the bait, see it? All yellow perch. Is that, uh, is that tape you got in there, is that like a uh, yellow perch? It's a yellow perch bait. Is there any certain point you can put your finger on as to why you fish so well this year? Uh, I probably, uh, I, I would think the biggest reason is I fish so much this year. I've never fished this much before. You know, I average, you know, probably since the beginning of the year, six days a week, you know, fishing. So. Does it give you confidence, even though you were on a completely different body of water your last tournament to come into another tournament? Do you get better as the tournaments build? Right, I don't really think that has that much to do with it. It's just kind of, you're, you know, you're feeling the fish from place to place, you know? And they're pretty well the same regardless. I mean, there's similarities anywhere we go. So, uh, you know, I, I guess that's probably the biggest, the biggest thing that's helped me. And, uh, you know, I've really been enjoying it. You know, we've had some bad weather, but I've caught some fish in bad conditions, and, and it has helped my confidence, you know, so I feel like, well, and this time I'm more so fishing the fish than fishing what I found in practice. You know, a little change, I make a little change. You know, I gamble a little more this year than I normally would. You know, I'll run to an area that I haven't even fished in practice. If I looked at it in practice, I was like, well, you know, it's got potential for everything lined up, you know, and then I go to those areas and they're there, you know, so just, uh, you know, I think it's kind of a combination of things that's really helped me. And you know, I've been really fortunate too, you know. I've had some really good, you know, some good breaks. It's just really helped me, so. But that's pretty big to be able to pick up and go to an area that you really hadn't practiced. You just looked at it and felt like it had potential and leave areas that you've been catching fish. Is that not, is something you've never done before? Well, not to this extent like I have this year, but I, I started noticing that's how most of the tournaments are won. They're not won on places that you've beat up. They're one on new places, new water, you know, fishing the pattern, you know, finding that place that hadn't been beat up, you know, as the weather, moving with the weather. I want to know what it feels like to win a major. <laughs> you know, I'm, I've been right there close, and um, and everybody who wins one really seems to enjoy it, and I want to try some <laughs> of it and see how it is, see what it feels like. 
I tell you, Greg, you're a prince of a guy and a heck of a fisherman, and I have enjoyed another day with you. I have enjoyed it too. Thank you. You got a long way to go, but I know you can get there. I hope so. Yamaha Pro Greg Hackney, heck of a fisherman, man. I tell you, now we're going to go join Taylor and Carlton for our Lake Champlain predictions. We're going to pick the winner of this tournament. Coming up next on FLW Outdoors. FLW Outdoors is brought to you by Field and Stream, the soul of the American outdoors. By Lay's, bet you can't eat just one. By Fujifilm, get the picture. And by Walmart, always low prices, always. Welcome back to FLW Outdoors. We are wrapping up our preview of the Lake Champlain event on the FLW Tour. Hank Parker joins us once again, and Hank, you had an opportunity to fish with some of the contenders. We found that catching fish was not a problem, but quality fish was the key. You know, that's a real challenge to these guys because it's really easy to get content catching two-pounders. Probably the only lake in America you can catch a limit of two-pounders and not even break the top 100. So they got to catch quality fish, got to find some three and four-pound fish. One of the pros you talk to is Vic Battalera. What does he have going, Hank? Vic is, uh, he's the bubble guy, you know. He's really got to catch fish, and he's found fish out a little bit deeper, but this weather is a big factor in that. We've had some real hard winds, and it's been pretty rough out there, so he's really kind of dependent upon the weather. Now, Yamaha pro Greg Hackney has something to fish for, too. Yeah, Hackney, uh, he fished a tournament just a couple of days ago, so he got in here. He's only going to have like a day and a half of practice, so he's really got his work cut out for him. And your newfound friend, Shinichi Fukai. <laughs> Shin is, uh, he's so hot. I mean, what can you say about the guy? He's only finished out of the top 20 like once all year. He's real consistent. He's got a 33-point lead. Uh, I think he'll catch fish. I think he'll end up being our Lando Lakes Angler of the Year. You've been on the lake. How's it going to be won? Well, it's really iffy, iffy, iffy. Sight fishing is going to be a factor, but if it's cloudy like it is today, then I don't think sight fishing is going to be the ticket. Uh, they're catching some big smallmouth and they're catching some big largemouth. It's really so many variables, it's hard to pick, but I really think it'll end up being largemouth. All right, here's our chance to make our picks. It's our last chance for glory here in the 2004 regular season. Hank, pick us a winner. <laughs> well, I fished with Kelly Jordan at uh, Kentucky Lake, and that guy's got the best eyes of anybody I've ever seen. He could see fish that I couldn't even see. I think sight fishing is going to be a factor here. We got really clear water. We got spawning bass. I think Kelly could be the man if we get the sunshine. All right. Well, in the last two tournaments, I've picked Dean Rojas, and it's had an adverse effect on his standing. So I'm going to give him a little bit of a break, and I'm going to steal Hank's guy. Larry Nixon enters this tournament as 52nd place in the season standings. He needs a good showing here at Lake Champlain to crack that top 48 and make it to the championship. When Larry needs something, Larry usually gets it, and so Larry's my man. So you're abandoning Dean Rojas. I'm not abandoning him. I'm just giving him a little bit. I've of got break. you, Dean. I'm picking <laughs> Dean Rojas because he finished second here last time. He's a good clear water fisherman, and he's fishing well. Dean Rojas will win this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about the FLW Championship. It's coming up in August. A million and a half dollars on the line. $500,000 to the winner. It is certainly a lot to fish for. And it's an event the whole family is going to enjoy. Over $100,000 in giveaways just for the kids. And it's capped off with a drawing after the final weigh-in where one fan wins a NASCAR Limited Series Ranger 521 VX bass boat powered by Evan Rood. Admission is free at the Birmingham Jefferson Convention Center in Birmingham, Alabama, August 11th through 14th. For more information, go to our website, flwoutdoors.com. Uh, Hank, with all that money on the line, somebody's life's going to change. Well, what a championship. That's a great event and a lot of money to fish for. All right, well, we will find out who is in and who is out in the FLW Championship at this event right here at Lake Champlain. It's the $1.25 million Forestwood Open. We crown a winner next week on FLW Outdoors. All right, Vic Barilero, the bubble Battalero. boy. You got it. I've bought you that already, Vic. Battalero. Battalero. Here we go. Are these good eating? No. Are they not? This is how you tournament guys do it, take your time. Right. I mean, you know, if y'all go out fishing, that's the kind I want to catch. You don't want to catch a bunch of knots, you know. I want to catch some heat. <laughs> right now, I'd take a knot. Right. <laughs> <laughs>